inspiration for this project came in part from my daughter's love for the world's oldest living tree species, the majestic ginkgo biloba, or maidenhair tree. Native to China and now found all over the world, the ginkgo biloba has been referred to by botanist Peter Crane as a living fossil because its species has survived unchanged for more than 200 million years. In addition to the tree's beauty and longevity, it's known for turning a golden yellow each autumn and losing nearly all of its leaves in one dramatic drop. The 1975 poem, The Consent, by Howard Nemiroff, reflects in awe upon this annual event, referring to the ginkgo biloba's leaves as fluttering fans of light. People around the world have come to associate the tree with hope, resilience, and longevity, and even friendship. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to make an electrified spinner card that turns on and off with help from a magnet and a concealed reed switch. To get started, you'll need the following tools and supplies. Two circuit sticker LEDs, conductive fabric tape, a coin cell battery, a reed switch and magnet, and a battery holder. You'll also need a ruler, a spool of smooth stainless steel conductive thread and a needle, a pencil, bone folder and scissors, double-sided tape, foam tape, glue, and something to make holes with. For a full list of tools and supplies, or to access the free cut file and circuit diagram for this project, please visit the description below. I used a Cricut Maker to cut out and score the main parts for this card. To quickly decorate my paper with ginkgo leaf prints, I used the Mini Ginkgo Leaf Stencil by TCW and Golden Shades of Ink by Tim Holtz and Lawn Fawn. To emboss the frames, I used a ginkgo embossing folder by Simon Says Stamped. And to create embellishments to hide my magnet, I used the Sweet Ginkgo Layering Stamp Set and Coordinating Die Set. Once you've prepped the pieces for your card, it's time to start building the circuit. It's a good idea to score the creases in your card pieces well before moving forward. Using your circuit diagram as a guide, place your battery holder template near the left edge of the undecorated side of the circuit layer, the piece with the holes in it. Make sure that you leave a bit of space between the battery holder and the left edge of the card for the conductive traces and foam tape. Secure the foam ring into the holder, but leave the protective backing on the top. Then start by laying down the negative trace, which will extend under your battery. Leave a gap in the center of the card for a reed switch. You'll be adding a reed switch magnet on in an upcoming step. We'll be coming back to the reed switch. But first you're going to lay down the positive trace, which will wrap around the battery holder and make contact with the top of the battery once it's placed inside. If you cut your tape too short, it's okay. You can tape over it, overlapping it well, to extend it. The next step is to prepare your LEDs. I find it helpful to mark the negative trace with the minus and the positive trace with the plus as a visual reference. If you wish for your light to be visible on both sides of the spinner, you're going to need to use two circuit sticker LEDs. In the example I'm holding here, I adhered two white fade animating LEDs back to back. The easiest way to line up the pointy end with the pointy end and the broad end to the broad end is by lining them up over a flat surface and pressing down. 
Once you have the two stickers joined, you're going to be creating conductive fabric tape tabs. To do this, adhere a folded tab of conductive fabric tape over each of the pads of the sticker pair so that it wraps from the front to the back of each pair. Each sticker pair should have two tabs of tape extending from the positive and negative sides and wrapping around from front to back. The tabs should be sturdy and not pull loose when they're tugged upon. For each sticker pair, in this case you have one pair, cut two pieces of smooth conductive thread that are approximately six to seven inches long. That's long enough to connect with the sticker and to wrap around the card part two or three times. Thread the needle with conductive thread and make a knot in one end of the conductive thread. Once you've knotted one end of the thread, pinch the eye of the needle to keep the other side of the thread from sliding out. Then carefully sew through each conductive fabric tape tab a couple of times to secure it in place. Sometimes it's helpful to use the mat to press the needle through each tab rather than trying to do it in the air. Once you have one end sewn, repeat this process for the second end. Don't trim the tails just yet. Instead, apply a piece of conductive fabric tape over the top of each tab, attempting to capture the tails underneath. Then you can cut off the excess. The reason for this is that conductive thread is really wiry and springy, and if you cut the thread too short, the knots can come loose. Adding this conductive fabric tape on top will help the thread stay secure. Here I'm using alligator clips to test my LEDs to make sure that they light up properly, but I'll show you another way to do this in a moment. The next thing you need to do is to center the LED so that the negative pointy side is oriented up and the broad positive side is oriented toward the bottom of the card. Use pieces of conductive fabric tape to anchor the LED strand in place, centering the LED in the oval opening. Once both sides are anchored down, it's time to wrap the conductive thread from the inside of the card through the holes and around the inner edges of the oval cutouts. If you wrap the thread around the outer edges of the card, rather than the inner ones, the thread will be visible on the outside of the card. Keeping the thread on the inner edges of the card will allow you to disguise them with the frame in another step. After wrapping around the inner edge three times, secure the thread in place over the conductive traces using conductive fabric tape. You can also use conductive fabric tape to secure the tails. If the tail is excessively long, you can trim the rest with scissors. Repeat this step for the other side of the card. Make sure that the threads holding the LEDs are centered, not too loose, and that the thread is well secured. Once your LEDs are sewn into place, go ahead and add your battery negative side down to the battery holder. I'm using a single CR2032, but you can substitute two thinner CR2016s into the holder for the same fit. To test the circuit, close the flap of the battery holder door on top of the battery and hold a piece of conductive fabric tape over the switch gap. Now it's time to add the reed switch. Locate the two recessed dots on one side of the reed switch. Once you've found those recessed dots, curl the legs of the reed switch to make it easier to secure and place the switch with the dots facing down over the gap in the negative lead. 
You can use a bone folder to press the legs down and then use conductive fabric tape to secure the legs into place. I often make X's using two pieces of conductive fabric tape rather than a single parallel line. This increases the surface tension to help ensure a stronger physical and electrical connection. Once you've adhered the reed switch, test the circuit by holding the battery flap on top of the battery and holding a magnet to the front side of the car directly on top of the reed switch. If it works, you can remove the protective backing from the foam ring, close the battery holder upon itself, and add a decor decorative element to the magnet. At this point, you're ready to start assembling the rest of the card. To attach the top layer to the circuit layer, apply foam tape around the perimeter of the card, avoiding the creased areas. Then carefully line everything up so that the pieces fold well and properly overlap. Before you close up the card, it's a good idea to add a small piece of metal such as a paper clip, a small little nut, or a thin washer to the inside of the card. This will give the magnet a place to rest when it's not being used to turn the circuit on and off. Lastly, cover up the conductive thread by adhering a frame over it and experiment with different materials to create your spinning piece. After you assemble the card, if you want to, you can also create a, a slider band around the card to keep it from flopping open when you're not using it. 